Hello, Call of Duty fans. Welcome to Tuesday Nights here on MLG COD. Mr. X, what do we do on Tuesday Nights? Uh, I believe we have pro scrims on Tuesday Nights. I think so. Who do we have tonight? Uh, tonight we have uh, Complexity, uh, former pro pro scrim champions. Yeah. Right? I still consider them pro scrim champions. Pro scrim they champions, won the most yeah. out of anyone. And then, uh, well, they're back because they won the 5K. And yeah, then, so Complexity, they're on tonight because they won the most recent 5K series against Optic Gaming in the finals, and their opponents, they're pretty good. Yeah, their opponents are uh, Curse Gaming, who actually beat them to the throne of in uh, Pro Scrims uh, last week, so it should be a good game again. Yeah, a lot of people are wondering, how does Complexity get on Pro Scrims every week? Well, you guys usually win your matchup, but when you don't, you pretty much secure yourselves an invite by winning either the 2K series, but yeah. this time it was the 5K series, and as you said before, Curse, Last time they matched up with Complexity, they won. Yeah. Now, granted, Aegis, he was pretty sick. You couldn't call out that much. But still, Curse, they dethroned the champs. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, Curse played amazing that day. Uh, Miracles in his new role on Curse, He's he's been playing really well. He's not... Not kind of the objective hail player he was on Impact. Mm -hmm. He's more of just a, a roaming slayer, and yeah, he was he was destroying that night. Yeah, he was ripping faces. Now, Mr. X, let's talk a bit about this matchup. So, Complexity, obviously, everybody knows about them, but Curse might be a team where you know the fans might not know as much as them. What are your keys to victory for both these teams? For let's start with Curse. Okay. For Curse to win this, they're really going to need to control the spawns on Hardpoint. You know. It, that really will come down to BO Fire against Clayster. And then also I'm interested to see if their teamwork and team play has gotten better since last week. They played amazing last week, but a new team. They lost to, I believe, Optic Gaming in the 5K. So um, Yeah, they did. So it'll be interesting to see if they've gotten better and they're better at their baiting and switching and just placement around the map. And then I really think they're going to need to shut down Clayster to win hard points and just all different game modes. I mean, Clayster's a beast. and. It's going to be that battle with BL Fire. It's really going to determine the hard Yeah, place. I'm real interested to see how their chemistry has evolved as a team. They've had quite a few weeks now with their new fourth to kind of mesh together. But not only that, I'm going to be looking at Blind Fire as well. He's new to the anchor role. But for complexity, we got Smarter Search and Destroy Play. That's been the one game type that you guys have been the weakest at or have shown that you are mortal in that game type. Yeah, but you know, I, we've been playing better in that. I think it's going to come down to just changing some strategies. And then also, they need to shut down Miracles. The last time we saw this matchup, he just went off, man. I, I believe he had like 46 or 47 kills on a Yemen hard point. Yeah, it's ridiculous. So they're definitely going to need to shut him down. And the last time we also saw them play, Curse controlled a lot of the score streaks. So Complexity is going to have to stop them from getting streaks, but also have more streaks than them. All right, so who are the players that we have to look out for on both teams? For complexity, I'm really going to be looking at uh, Crim6, you know. For hardpoint, uh, his captures and defense, and also he just needs to terminate. He really just needs to, if he's terminating around the hill and getting both of those, I mean, he's he's unstoppable. Yeah, if Crim6 is killing people, then if you're on the other team, you don't want any Not part good. of that game. Yeah. And then for uh, Curse, we're, we're looking at BL Fire, like you we were saying. It's all going to come down to his positioning and hardpoint and the anchor battle with Clayster. And it's going to be a tough battle. Blind Fire, he's normally an aggressive assault rifle player. He's most recently switched to the anchor role. Last time we saw him anchor, it was at PAX in a tournament environment. And, you know, it looked like he, was still, he still wanted to be aggressive. He still wanted to be the in the action. But now he's got three aggressive submachine gun players in front of him. And he really needs to focus up, slow down his gameplay, and focus on holding down the spawns for his team. And going up against Clayster, it's... It's a tough one. Yeah, he's definitely going to need to change gameplay a little bit. Like you said, he, he plays extremely aggressive for an anchor in an AR position, so it's going to be interesting to see how he plays tonight in that one-on-one -on -one anchor chess game with Clayster. All right, so who do you think is going to take tonight's matchup? I'm going to say <laughs> I'm going to say complexity. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to go with Curse then. Okay. However, it's going to be a tough one. I was looking at my friends list when I was inviting the players. Curse, they were playing a different game before they hopped on Call of Duty. Can I guess which game? Uh, no. What? Maybe, sure, guess. Was it Grand Theft Auto V? No, it was uh, Halo 4. Oh, okay. Yeah, so. But um, Complexity, they've been on Call of Duty. They've been warming up. You know, I saw Teep and Aches. Teep was probably grinding out some league play as he always does. Yeah, so yeah, Complexity... Always. They're going to be coming in hot, and it's going to be up to Curse to try to match that tempo. Yeah, and I mean, you know, Curse is probably feeling pretty good about themselves because, I mean, they, they played amazing last week on Pro Scrims on Tuesday. And also, they had a pretty good showing in the 5K. They, I think that, I believe they fell, like, just short of pat, uh, full sale. So, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure they're going to come out 
pair tonight. All right, so I just want to remind you guys, keep interacting with us all night long through Twitter. We're going to be giving away some one-month Game Balance premium codes. So if you want, want to win some of those, make sure you tweet out along with hashtag MLG. Who do you think is going to win tonight's pro scrim? You got hashtag complexity or hashtag curse. And if I may, which I am, I'm going to be voting hashtag curse. Okay, so then I'll have to do hashtag complexity. All right, and you know, before I, I went into that spiel, mm -hmm. you were talking about the Full Sail Invitational. It was yeah. recently announced the four teams that have received invites to that event. Who are they? You got Complexity, Unite Gaming, Optic Gaming, and FaZe. All four amazing teams. I mean, uh, Unite with the addition to Killa, I mean, they're mm -hmm. extremely good. And FaZe is an extremely underrated team. At, they're so talented. At PAX, they came out, I believe, was it the, I think it was the first day they started out like 8-2 and two or 8-3. and three. I think that was Unite, but in the end, it was FaZe, yeah. I think, at the end of day two or three that were tied for yeah, first. Yeah, FaZe was tied for first. Like, where did FaZe come from? A really long time, yeah. I mean, Replace has those guys super prepared. And the other three, I mean, Huddle, Slack, and Space League are super talented. And... They impressed me so much at the PAX event because they really switched up roles as they went into their first game. Huddle decided to rotate back and be the anchor for the team. Replays now back to an aggressive submachine gun, and they were looking so strong. I mean, I've always preached about Huddle, Space Lane, Slack. They're the trio. Yeah. I mean, you saw them at our Dallas event under Unite. They were actually teaming with Clayster, in, and they only lost to one team, and that was Impact. Yeah, and I mean, in the addition of Replays, he's an extremely smart player. And he has those guys, I mean, he's watching everybody's theater. He knows everything. And then he also has his team in perfect position every yeah, game. Yeah, he's a natural leader. Oh, uh, I mean, yeah. Talk to any player about replays. They only have good things to say about him. So you pair him along with the trio, and they're going to be a force to be reckoned with now. I can't wait for that event. I'm going to be there. You'll be there coaching your team. Yeah. I'll be one of the commentators. But it's going to be such a sick event. If you're around the Orlando area and you want to spectate that event, head over to MajorLeagueGaming.com and go to the store. You can purchase your spectator pass there. Remember, Call of Duty, it's only one day. I believe it's going to be the Saturday. Saturday. Yeah, yeah it's Dota gonna 2 Saturday. is going to be the first day. But that Full Sail University, it's going to be sick. No, it's going to be an awesome venue. I mean, they've done a few Full Sail invitations before, and they've all turned out really sick. So, I mean, I'm kind of pumped to go. All right, well, I'm looking at the in-game lobby. It looks like everybody's here and ready to go. Now, the players, they have to host because our net is still on strict, so it's really tough for anyone to connect problems. to us. But it looks like the first map for tonight's scrim is going to be Hardpoint on the map slums. Yeah, and, you know, Hardpoint slums, like uh, I said, and you were wrong, it's controlled by the ARs. No, still, if you have a roaming sub that's going off, you're not going to be able to even touch that anchor. I, I, I don't know. I still, I'm still going to say that ARs control this map, because I was right last time. They, they always control the spawns, that's a given. No, but there are some maps where subs are mostly dominant, like standoff. I'll still say yeah. subs are dominant on standoff. Your anchor really doesn't, I mean, he matters, he's there, I mean, he's doing something, but... He's important. He's a little bit important. But, I mean, it's going to be interesting to see how Curse plays this, because I've seen a lot of teams lately, they, they stack anchor extremely hard on this map. So now, so. if you're coaching Curse... And you're talking to Blind Fire, right. who's relatively new to the anchor role, and he's going up against Clayster. What are your words of advice to him? He just needs to play ex like extremely passive. He okay. plays extremely, extremely, extremely aggressive for an anchor, and you just got to basically challenge him to not die and just force him to not. Blind Fire, <laughs> if you hear us right now, don't die. Don't die. die. <laughs> Stay <laughs> alive for keep... as long as you can. Well, you notice usually the games that teams win their anchor always has the least amount of deaths mm -hmm. there he's just staying alive staying alive staying alive he just needs to stay alive those extra few seconds in those sp spots to get his team the better spawns and i mean i, I they'll be they're, they're already a great team but I, they'll be even better i mean it's so tough to just talk to yourself and be like you know i gotta play this passively five seconds seems like an eternity, eternity. especially like wow man the other team they're racking up time on this hard point but i really gotta wait for my team to come back me up on this yeah point. and it, it's extremely uh, difficult to change your play style when you've been a successful player and you've been playing extremely well to mm -hmm. something that you're not accustomed to because then uh, you're just not used to the positions and then the results might not be the same and then you just want to go back to the prior because you know those results. Yeah, it seems like a lot of players, they, uh, a lot of people out there, they don't really want to play the anchor role, which opens up a slot for any up-and-coming players out there. If you want, you know, probably your best shot at getting yeah, on a top team, go learn the anchor role, man. Oh, uh, yeah, if you can become a good anchor, I mean, there's, point, I there's, a, there's definitely a need for some... I mean, there are very talented There's anchors, a demand but for it. There, are, there is more of a demand for talented anchors. All right, well, the game has started. We're on board with TP. Never mind, I just cursed them. Let's hop on board with Crim6. Okay. 
I'm Curse just going to stay on Complex. Cool. Yeah, you know, Complex is an uh, extremely underrated sub player. You know, extremely aggressive. This Curse team is full of extremely aggressive players. Yeah, you got Complex, Miracles, and Twiz. And Twiz is really the most versatile on this team. He could use an Assault Rifle. He could use a sub. Play passive, play aggressive. But I uh, talk about Curse being on a different game coming onto Call of Duty, but they're starting up very strong here. They already have 25 points in their name, and Complex is around three quarters of the way to his score streaks. Yeah, and I mean, this first hill to get, if they can get 30 to 40 seconds and build some streaks, I mean, that, that would be huge for the rest of the game. They just have to make sure that they hold the spawn, though. Yeah, speaking of spawns, I just highlighted Blindfire on the minimap. He was the first one to rotate back, so Curse, they got a lot of time on that middle hard point. They're going to win the rotation here. And Our Complex looks like he's going to get the capture points here, so he's going to get another start. To the, he actually got his score sheets with that. He did, yeah. He had to get his score sheets with that. You know, he got he got a Hellstorm and his Lightning. He didn't get the War Machine, which is which is not as big. I mean, it's very good for the Garage Hill and mm -hmm. probably good for this bottom hill. But, I mean, those two streaks are going to come in huge when it moves to White Wall and Garage. But it looks like Complexity, yeah, they've broken the anchor, and they had the spawns yeah, for the time being. Contested. Great pick there from Complex, able to take out Ace, yeah, but Crimson is there with the clean kill. Let's hop on board with Miracles. He's the new guy from the Curse lineup, and he's hard actually within a close distance to the Curse team house. So he's been over there, you know, shooting from time to time. And I got to say, he's fitting in very well with this team. Yeah, you know, it, it seemed like an odd fit at first when he joined Curse that personality-wise might not fit in, but, you know, They've, I've been watching, they've been getting along together, and they've been playing great. So I think, it was, I mean, it was an amazing addition. Yeah, everybody on this Curse team, they have a winning attitude. They're all about the grind. They're all about putting in the time and seeing the results from that. So great attitudes on this team results in great teamwork. So we'll see how they've evolved. I got Twiz on your screen. He's the guy yeah, inside the hard identified. point. And really, Complex Toys and Miracles, they could all rotate in the hard point. They could all rotate out of the hard point. But let's go on board with somebody who's being a bit more aggressive. It's going to be Miracles roaming around the grave area of the map. I should have stayed on board with Twiz. He's got all three, well, three Complexity members were pushing him, but it's Complex. He's the guy with streaks. Yeah, you know, that was a smart push from Complexity right there to push down Blue Street. I believe they're, they're spawning them out. And, you know, it's that's probably the, the best way to break this anchor is to push Friendly straight down the street because you can't give... You can't give them all 60 seconds on that hill and just play for four guys anchor in garage. I got to give props to Blindfire on that play right there. We were telling that he's got to yeah. be a bit more passive, a bit more patient, and he just played that one perfectly. He was all alone over near the laundry side of the map, stayed alive long enough for Complex to call in his lightning strike, and now Curse, they've held on to the spawns. They're going to get the rest of this time, and it looks like they're already set up for the garage hard point. Good anchoring so far from Blindfire. Yeah, you know, one thing that's a little bit different from his uh, class setup as opposed to other anchors is lightweight, lightweight and extreme. What do you think about that? It's a bit Hardpoint risky, identified. but he's also following up with a double Hardpoint trophy system class. So he's relying on these trophy systems to protect from any lethal and tactical grenades. But it is a bit risky. I mean, if he's able to make it work, you can't really knock him for it. No, yeah, you can't knock him for it Hardpoint if he's contested. making it work. But at the same time, if his other team members don't run extreme conditioning, it could hinder him, but at, I do. I like the idea of extreme conditioning that he can rotate extremely oh, early and he can get there faster. But mm -hmm. I'm a little bit worried about if he's on streaks, let's say, and then he starts rotating and he doesn't have trophies, he's pretty much dead to rights if they have stuns or EMPs and nades. We'll see if that affects him later into the game, but it was complex once again working towards some streaks, but he didn't get them in the end. It's going to be his teammate Twiz now doing some work inside the hard point, and I'm looking at the minimap. The complexity players, they're going to give up on the current hard point, so I want to take this time pop up our scoreboard. It's Miracles on top, 14-9, and nine, but more defense, more captures for complex on the complexity side. It looks like they're off to a very slow start. Friendly yeah, off to an extremely slow inbound. start, but, you know, going in a second rotation of hills, I believe hard that's... I, I don't believe Curse Hostiles has any more streaks left after that. I believe Complex used his lightning. Yeah, he did. So, you're in decent shape. If you can get maybe 30, 40 down. seconds on this and then hold spawn, you can get another 30 and 40 and just keep chomping away. Well, I'm going to be looking at this guy, Crimsix. He's one of our players to watch. And, you know, if Crimsix starts heating up, if his hard aimbot hard kicks test. in, he's going to be slaying noobs all day. But he wasn't able to acquire his score streaks there. So, I want to go on board with his teammate Ace. He's the captain of Complexity. And this is one of his best maps. He loves to roam around and kill people. Yeah, I mean, I, I think one of, the, one of the best games we've seen from anybody all year was probably that uh, Slum's hard point mm -hmm. against Impact at Anaheim from Ace. You know, I think started off 22 and 4. And, you know, it, this map is great for him because he can run an AR or a sub, and he's super aggressive with both. Well, it looks like Complexity, they acquired a decent amount of time on that middle hard point. Clay Series is going to be staying alive in the back here trying to control the spawns. Well, it looks like his teammate Aix is going to challenge for the scrappy time. And, of course, you got TP ready to jump on board to the next hard point. But it looks like he's going to help out clan the anchor. So for the time being, Complexity, they're not going to get any time off the bottom lot hard point.
Yeah, but you know, it's extremely important to keep that anchor alive. I mean, you, it, you can get you get 10 seconds, but then your anchor is dead. It's really it's really a loss of 10 seconds. I mean, you're not going to get that time back again because they're going to have spawns. So it's it's a it's a little bit risky of a play to let them take it, but you know, it's probably the best decision in that situation. Did you see how aggressive Placer was being on that anchor spot? He was pushed up all the way towards the car coffee arch. It looks like they had a really solid setup over near the middle of the map, and I love that play because it essentially gives them a second chance to hold on to the anchor if he gets taken out near the cop car. And also, you know, when a lot of the anchors, they play a lot pre-aimed in because you're playing at mm -hmm. a slower pace, so when you're expecting that guy to be all the way in that back wall and he's right up in you in coffee, it's, it's almost a free win of a gun battle because you catch him so completely off guard. Well, now it's all about the rotation to the white wall hard point. You see Curse already set up, but Curse, they were up by 90 points at one point in this game. And now complexity, they brought it to within 30. So they've definitely been winning the last two hard points, but they didn't get any score shakes out of it. So how are they going to go about breaking this hard point? No, well, it'll be interesting to see which way they start to push. It looks like we're seeing them push garage, trying to get spawn. But at the same time, you're not putting any pressure on the hill, so you're giving them this time. And if you look at your mini map, now it looks like they're going to go push through white wall. DP hopping over the wall, unable to find a kill. Instead, it's going to be Aix taking over inside the harbor, but he's gotten his assault right for relying on his teammates to give him some cover fire here. He was forced to reload. It's going to be Clayster in front of the hard point. Looks like Twiz is able to step back in for Curse as they're going to retake control. But to Twiz, he's on two kills where you saw Blindfire heating up as well. And Blindfire, he's being aggressive as well over near the graveyard. And as you saw on the minimap, he spawned right in the back laundry. So Curse, they're doing a phenomenal job right now of holding on to the spawns. Yeah, they're doing a great job of holding on to the spawns. And if you notice, though, that that push down street, it forced them to kind of have more focus on the street, mm -hmm. and they gave up Garage a little bit, so it'll be interesting if they can take Garage back. All right, so if I'm looking at Complexity, there are one chance or to get a better chance at coming back into the game, they got to acquire score streaks and win this hard point. If you win this hard point, you're going to bring the deficit to around 10, maybe 20 at most, and then you're going to need at least the Hellstrom missile to clear off Curse of the middle statue hard point. Yeah, you're gonna need to acquire streaks right here. You know that would be that would be huge to this game. And right now, you hard can't really. Oh, Clayson nice. just picks up two in the hard point, so he's extremely close to streaks. But you need to leave this hard point with streaks, and you need to get at least probably 30 to 40 seconds off that. Which I mean, right now with their setup, it looks like it's possible. And these trophy systems, even though it's only 25 points, they're definitely gonna help him out. Look, now he's only one kill away. His trophy system does get destroyed by an EMP grenade, but he finds one over near the white van. Even the assist at this point, it might even give him the score streak. Oh, he gets uh, taken on the back. That is so unfortunate. And uh, that's just a huge kill. I mean, sometimes you don't even realize how big those kills are when you when you get one on somebody like that. But the shutdown of streaks right there at that moment, I mean, that may save the game for Curse. Okay, so moving into the final two hard points of the map. Complexity, they're only down by around 35 points right now. Not that big of a deficit, but it's going to be Crimsix trying to work on some score streaks, and these streaks could allow Complexity to win the map. Yeah, I mean, the pickup oh streaks here would be huge, man. But we're not seeing any streaks out of Complexity. Like we said in the pregame, it's going to be, they're going to need a control score streak control to win this, and we, they, they've been outstreaked by uh, Curse. Yeah, so far, I think only Complex has been the player to acquire score streaks, and that was back when Curse had around a 90-point lead, but the, that, the lead for Curse, it's only 20 right now. Clays are on the hard part. Never mind, it's going to be up to Aix to hold on to position for Complexity. He gets taken out in the back. It's now Miracles on a two-kill spree. Not only that, he's run halfway to acquiring his score streaks, and there are only 60 seconds left in the game. Yeah, and I mean, if, if he can... Uh, he, he just got taken out, but if he were to acquire streaks, it's pretty much over. And right now, this this anchor battle is going to be huge. If, if Curse can hold spawn... For this last 30 seconds, uh -oh. they'll probably win. Uh-oh, Complex, he's spawning all the way across the map. It's up to Blindfire to hold position, and he's able to pick up one there, it looked like. But there are going to be more Complexity players, as it looks like they're all going to be pushing through the brick side of the map. But Mr. X, I think it's I think all it's over. it's mathematically impossible. Yeah. Yes, you know, a great start from Curse. Check like timeline. we were saying at the beginning, it's all about that score street control. I would, I would assume that... If you have more streaks than the other teams throughout the Hard game, I would say you win that round, what, 90, like 90% 95%. 95% of the time? Especially on slums where if you use that lightning strike, if you use that hellstorm effectively and efficiently, you're going to be able to break their setup and then take control of the spawns for whatever hard point you decide to use the streaks on. Yeah, I, I agree. that it, It's definitely score, hard point. 17, definitely that's for blind fire, by the way. Yeah, see, uh, he just needed to not die. Yeah. It's as simple as that. Advice. Don't die. Way to take you guys out there, you're an aspiring win. anchor. Don't the die. The number one tip for you, just don't die, man. Just don't just die. Stay alive. No, but those extra few seconds, like when we saw when Complexity was trying to push that back wall that last second, 
when he stayed alive instead of challenging one or two guys. And I mean, that got his team that extra 30 seconds, which ended up being the difference in the game. And it's Miracles leading the way at 33 and 27. Five captures, five defense. Curse, they come out strong on map number one. And, you know, every team that matches up against Complexity, it seems like Curse is the team that takes the most maps off them. Yeah, you know, Curse is an extremely tough matchup for any team. They're extremely talented, extremely versatile. And yet they're, they're very aggressive. They, I like what they're doing with Miracles a lot. They're letting him just kind of roam and slay. Yeah, they're letting Miracles do his thing, and man, is he doing it. But anyways, guys, we're going to head to a quick commercial break, but stay tuned because more Call of Duty action is coming your way.